Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner of YouTube. I hope you're doing fine and well and I do hope you've found time to be creative and to have a go at drawing along with me. Um, I like sharing these step-by-step -step things with you because my whole aim I suppose is to get you drawing, to get you having a go and seeing that when things are broken down into simple shapes or simple steps, it's not so difficult to do. And it might take a little bit of practice and it might take a bit of confidence building to accept that it may not look like what somebody else has drawn, but this is how I draw it. This is my style. This is the way my hand works. And I'm quite comfortable with that and happy with it. And like everything, practice helps following along with somebody else helps to make it truly your own that's when you start to explore and try new things out and, and just have a go at things so today i want to look at um, i think i'll have a quick look at a couple of tangle patterns because they were side by side i'm going back to tanglepatterns.com because it's a vast resource <clears throat> and at the top of the page they have sort of like a random selection of tangles and i went oh i haven't drawn that one or that one in that form or I draw things that are a bit like this but I don't think I've actually ever done this and it's called I would call it Ginnilly but the instructions are <laughs> in, the, in the blurb it's Ginny Lee and it's by Randy Wynn Parry so I shall add that there and the other one I want to look at because it is near and dear to my half, heart. I think it's called Ginkgo. And I don't know who that's by, but we'll have a look afterwards because I just need to flip back a page there. So Ganilli is a very organic kind of pattern and it can look like a flower or it can be a great filling pattern. So I'm going to start by drawing it as if it's going to fill things in and although I've drawn my lines there with a, a Copic multi-liner an 0351 I'm going to actually do my drawing with a Tombow Fudenosuke pen I like these I like the flexibility of the nib I like being able to get a fine line and it copes well with my heavy handedness that I really deliberately have to be heavy handed to get a thicker line and they're also permanent, which means I can add water soluble stuff over them or water based stuff that would dissolve other pens. I'll tell you more about other pens in a moment. But Ganilli starts with just drawing some almost random shapes that have a bit of a curve to them. So, this is the very first. Um, layer here and I'm just going to I'm just looking in my pencil case a moment because there was a pen I wanted to dig out I've got it I have it here look at this I've got an 01 yes you heard me right I've got an 01 brown micron the time I bought um, a couple of these the brown ones were the only ones, the O ones were the only ones I could get hold of. They're like gold dust, the O twos. But I just have to be gentle with it. And what I'm doing is from the central point out to the edge of these shapes, I'm just putting some lines in and I am curving these lines to give them that organic feeling to them, like these are petals. And you might say that even this looks a little bit like a flower. These, the curving shape really does give that feeling that these shapes are curved themselves or are bent in some way or are curving. Now, I'm going to add some weight to the end of each of these lines. I'm going to look and see if there is such a thing as a brown Tombow Fudenosuke pen. I've seen there are colours of them, but I'm not sure if you can get them as open stock because the other colours don't really interest me, but I do like a brown one. Though there may be others, perhaps a grey one would be a good idea as well. But I should try and remember to have a hunt around. 
just adding that little bit of colour at the end just helps to add some weight to this and it also darkens that edge and makes it feel as if it's that little bit further away just a little bit it helps with that idea that it's folding so that's the first round you could leave it here if you like that and draw lots of them perhaps with leaves around them so we could and um, perhaps I'll just very quickly do that here in this kind of fashion and I will use my Tombows and you might be able to see that the ends are thicker simply because I'm pressing harder on the pen. I don't get as fine a line to begin with as the um, as the O1 Micron, but I still get a thin enough line that you get the contrast. I'm not moving my pen in the right direction for this. So I like to move it towards me to get the thicker end, but that's another option there. I find it's um, a bit clunky with just black. I quite like that fineness of the brown lines. And what I'll do is I'll also remind us of how we got to that point as well with that kind of shape. So then we can add around the outside. And I'm not even looking at the deconstruction on tanglepatterns.com. I did for the central bit. But for this, it is just a question of adding kind of petal shapes. And I'll tell you what else I'm going to do here. I'm also going to add some thickness to this line, but also round these corners off. So we get a feeling of a separate kind of layer there. And then the same process of filling this in. these lines and I'm going to curve them down. I have the feeling of them curving downwards towards the edge of each of these as if they are curled over. The more extreme your curve, the more curved they look. In the middle they wouldn't look quite as curved so you start with, with a line that's more or less straight and to either side of it you gradually increase that curve. And you can vary the density as well, like here where there's a little lip in, perhaps I just want to put lots of lines close together and space them a little bit further apart. So you can play with the density of line to enhance that feeling of um, dimension, I suppose, or variety. That. And on this out, this inside one, I weighted these lines towards the edge, but here we could actually add them under here to help with that idea of shadow. May not be able to do every single one of them, as my eyes haven't woken up quite yet today, and it's lovely and sunny out. It really is. Then that adds some um, shadow there. It's not black so it's not going to get confused with the outer line because I'm using brown. But it really does help, I think. And then I'll leave the other ends as they are. And you can compare and contrast the, the effects that we get. So we just carry on doing this all the way around. So I shall do these quickly without any of that weighting on them. So if you draw them close enough together, it darkens that area anyway. But if it's not dark enough, then that's what I'd suggest you do. You might see that I am following these around that shape and there are places where I want to them really close together like here where perhaps there's a fold. And then at the edges 
you can see that where they overlap, not always here, these lines more or less go in the same direction, but here they go in a different direction to the ones in the, the petal beneath it. And that helps to separate the petals out as well. Now we're adding a lot of pattern here. So that's the start of Ginny Lee, or Ginny Lee, Ginny Lee. I think I read too much in the way of Tolkien and so on. Or perhaps it's the Welshness in me. Ah, it's not Ginga, Ginko, they've spelt it Gingo. So Gin, Go, here we are. Sketchbooks. And it's, I'm looking at who it's by. It's by Lisa Chang. CZT. I didn't check to see if Rip Randy was a CZT. But her, her way of drawing ginkgo is quite interesting. It's different to how I do it. So I'm going to do it my way because I find it works out better for me this way. I don't know why I took my glasses off. <laughs> so... I'm going to pop the stem in. I'm going to draw the curves that you find at the bottom of ginkgo leaves. <coughs> and then, in Lisa's, she puts a wavy line on the top. And then we can do this for a whole host of them. And they can hide behind each other if we wish. The way she does them is she draws that first and then draws that and the stem. But either way works. I tend to like to put the bottom bits in first because they can, can go a bit skew whiffy with me otherwise. So I'm going to pop one here and I'm just going to curve that up a bit because this is one of my favourite shapes for ginkgo leaves. It's just a very simple shape but I also have a habit and I'll do one under here. So I like this of putting little fragments or little knocks in them and again this is another one and you can see how they were together and I thought oh these are so similar this one is like you've layered ginkgo leaves into a bunch and this one is ginkgo leaves growing almost like flowers in a garden or leaves or even single trees. Have you ever noticed if you look at the shape of a leaf and you look at the shape of the tree, particularly when it's lost its leaves, so in the winter, how similar they are? So that's an idea I use when I'm drawing trees for my colouring books, is I tend to use, draw, um, tree shapes that remind me of leaves. Not always. So don't come back to me if you see one of my colouring books go, Angela, you said that you did this and you don't. It's true. I don't always. Sometimes I just make them big like lollipop stick trees because they're fun or puffy kinds of shapes. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but hey ho, it is what it is. I have got here a white jelly roll. And because this paper is off-white and I've got a jelly roll that doesn't want to work, or it is now, this is an 05. You can buy white jelly rolls now in different thicknesses. The secret with all the jelly roll pens is to use a very light touch to get the to allow the ink to flow. I'm not sure if that will show up on the camera. Does it? 
yes it does just but I think I'll keep that for a little bit later on so we've got ginkgo we've got gimli let me just go back and check whether or Ginny Lee no it doesn't say that Randy is a CZT which is fine which is fine I'm just having a quick look to see if there's any G's that are very similar in in kind of construction don't think so so let's have a quick look at some you know ginkgo leaves are easy for me to vary because they are one of my favorite leaves to use excuse me I just pop my clip around the other side I'm actually working upside down in my sketchbook because this is the front of the book this is the back and with it the other way around it was so awkward to rest my hand on I thought right I'm just going to turn it around which is what I do and does it matter no it's a sketchbook it's not a book to read it's a book to look at it's my book so what about other shapes for ginkgo leaves well I think we could just put a t-shape there if you're not sure about this and we can just pop a curviness there it's not quite the same and it lends itself to perhaps to spreading these shapes out but you know it would work and thicken I like to add a little weight at the bottom of these so it feels like you know at the bottom of a, a leaf sometimes you get that knobbly bit at the end of the stem instead of putting it at the end of the stem I've popped it you know, at the end of the leaf so that would look that actually looks better if we do that is to give that a distinct curve on the end so that kind of shape and then we'll do our curved shapes like that and I'm actually getting into this fluffy shape and then we can just draw these back towards that heavy shape there and that works quite nicely that actually is quite nice and it's easy enough if you want to then to add a couple more in to extend that it's easy enough to do with these again I would like to just add a bit of weight here where these lines join the outer edge I think that looks nice so that's a nice variation with this one pop the lines in like this and I do like to break the lines up as well I didn't do that in any of my others but if you break the lines up in these let me show you So I'm going to do some rounding of lines here and waiting and waiting the bottom of them and I'm rounding where these petals seem to join. I think in Randy's pan she actually rounds in between each of these lines which is another possibility I'll do and I like I don't mind doing them on the same drawing because what that does is it gives us the um, a comparison of all the different ways to do things and it's that kind of you're building up your own resource of ideas of ways of doing things and it's in a sketchbook in my case whether it's this one or my disc bound one but it's there for me to look back on and it doesn't matter if something doesn't work out it's a reminder for me, I don't like that, don't do it again. And I might even write a note on there saying, oh, Angela, what were you thinking? Something like that. This is for you. You can share it with people if you like. I mean, I'm sharing mine with you. Warts and all. This isn't perfect. And um, I think that is one of the powers of having a sketchbook where you just give yourself permission to work in it for the sheer fun of it, for exploring things, trying things out, practicing. 
and as a resource of ideas. So, um, you know, I have my visual books where I've got a sing, you know, single motif or a single pattern in there, but I haven't got the variations I could do. So this gives me that option to work with that and to have a bit of fun. Okay, so I was saying about this is if I do these and I break the line roughly in the same place, it doesn't have to be in exactly the same place. But you get a hint of sparkle and shine there. You get a lighter area in the middle and it makes it feel like there's something being reflected. Sometimes I put a dot in the break just to make that break a little bit wider to a, as if there's a shiny a bit or two dots. And sometimes no break. You can vary it across the um, across the petal, the leaf or the object that you're doing and then you get a change in the thickness of that highlight. So that was the one thing I wanted to do. The other one was, let's do some lines here and I am using just the brown pen for all of this, though I think this would work a little bit better if I was to use the black, so I will do another petal with black. Oh, I needed that one because what we're going to do is create really rounded sections at the end here. I'm adding weight to the end of these but in a specific way so I, I create the ends of these, um, these sections are quite square whereas with this it's giving a rounded shape to this section. like that. So it works with brown, it'll work with black, but black is a lot starker. So let's just do one next door, like so, and I will add some of these lines in. It's going to look quite different as well because my pen is a lot thicker, but the idea is the same as we're going to create a shape like this and we end up with those rounded edges there so it's got a different feel to it it's got a more weighty feel um, with the black certainly because the lines are thicker but here as well is that edge gets a, a thicker feeling to it so it's entirely your choice and the same can be done, well, we don't need to do the same with the ginkgo leaves because it's already done. But we can enhance it just by thickening that line a little bit in between them. And I could do the same with these. So I'm just adding a little bit there to round the corners inside those sections. I'll leave one not done so I can see the comparison. Other things, going back to Gingo, I'm going to use my fine liner here, my black one, because I can, if I want them to look more like a flower, I can perhaps pop stamen in like that. And also, with this, we could pop in borders like this, and they don't have to match up, if anything, they're quite cute if they don't. So we have like a line going around, and by curving those lines, it gives that feeling of dimension as well. So that's quite fun. So lots of things to consider. If we have a look at Ginelli again. So my Tombow works really well on this paper. The fine liners tend to feel scratchy and sticky on it. Okay, if we go to this one. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out. You notice by putting the weight on the outside edge of the leaves, 
these 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 sections it feels like the center is pointing up and they're pointing down it, it enhances that feeling of curvature far more than the straight lines do so it's just something to bear in mind there's nothing to say well, i've got a bit of fluff on this right there's nothing to say we have to use odd shapes like that for guinea I'm still going to be calling it Guinelli because that's what it seems to me. And as I'm learning Welsh, and I've lived in Wales most of my life, all about five years really, five and a bit years, um, Welsh is a very phonetic language and I tend to pronounce things very phonetically. And that's not always the case with the names of Zentangle, Tangle patterns. So it's useful if somebody gives you how you say it, but otherwise it's going to be said phonetically. Yes, so that kind of shape works quite nicely, and I am going to I'm going to add some weight to weight to these. I'm not going to round them. Just add some weight to the end of these, which I could have done if I'd thought about it by adding or gradually increasing the pressure of my pen tip, but I didn't. And then we can add some more of these shapes. I'm going to be careful and make sure that these join one another in between the lines. Hopefully you can see, I'm not going to zoom in because I'd have to fuss and faff around a bit here. But where I've added these lines, I've joined them in between these sections and then I can add others between them. That breaks, that will break up the lines that I draw here. They won't join up to these and it will feel a more pleasant perhaps and easy transition. It will help to separate each from the other as it were. Um, I'm not explaining myself well can see that this feels quite distinctly separate. It doesn't feel that it's starting from any one of these lines, um, apart from this central one, which is fine. And if we join all of these radiating lines from the same point, like so, and um, Add a bit of weight at the bottom. I'm going to round those little sections where these inner petals join because they're a good place to start. These lines from that radiate from that point to create that guinea pattern. And here where there isn't a rounding, we'll just take it from there. These might be the only ones that appear to bloom from one place, but that's fine. And so you can build it up. So you can use any shape you like. You could even use a big sort of squarish shape. And do you notice what I did there? I put shadow at the bottom so that if I add the next one in, I can add shadow that way as well. And if I do this one, Put the shadow there and it helps to set lift those up and add the dimension. So again, we can add pattern there. And what I'll do for these is I will go back to the brown. So you can see that it's quite distinctly different. So you can use any shape you like and play around with them. These started off roughly heart shaped, but then they ended up more like the ginkgo leaves because I ginkgo, ginkgo leaves on my brain, because I don't know what it is. How do you just, how do you explain to somebody why you like this a particular shape? It's so hard, I do, it just pleases me. It It's a very happy kind of shape. It's, I, I don't know. I just love the shape. It may be something to do with my love of Art Nouveau. Um, Art Nouveau um, 
jewellery and the like. That could have something to do with it because there's often ginkgo leaves in, in those, but not always. Okay, I am looking here for a... No, I don't want to use that one. Um, what colour have I got here? I've got Madder Brown. I trust, trust me, I giggle every time I hear that. This is an ink to ink tense pencil and I'm just picking up some of it on my brush so I can use it as a shadow there and perhaps a little bit around, popping it where leaves overlap but also around the edge leaving a highlight and that instantly starts to bring this to life. I can do the same under here. Oop. Just pulling that out a bit down the petal, thinking about the shape of this and how where the curve would be. Just pick up a little bit more of that ink. And then leaving a bit of it just empty to leave the highlights. Just very, very simple. And in the centre it'd be the same kind of thing, it's just the middle would perhaps be darker. And I'll put some around the outside edge. And I'll just pick a little bit more up and add some inside. Like so, and leave a bit of a highlight. If you don't like me, I don't particularly like a stark highlight. I can just go in with the barest amount of colour and just colour that in and perhaps just add a little bit of wet just to ease that out. So you can see instantly how that really does help to bring shape and dimension to this. Um, I'm using brown as the shadow. Equally I could use a colour. Um, perhaps if I wanted to infer that this was a flower I could use a flowery colour. Here it could be autumn leaves or some weird plant. It really doesn't matter what you use. But I quite like using ink tense pencils this way at the moment because they they're permanent. I don't need much of the colour to go a long way. I'll leave the outside edge in these ones. Yep. Don't need a lot of ink de ink tents to go to fill something in, and I find if I put it directly on the paper, I end up with too much. So by adding the colour in this kind of way, I can control far more easily where the depth of colour is. That was a strange one to do, but it's fine. So I'll just do some over here, perhaps some under here, because I think it's nice to show how you could add shadow. I'll add some here. And now the brush is mostly water, I'll just fade out along there. Do the same on this one. Thinking about where the shadows will be darkest would be underneath these. Where things overlap and everything else will be much lighter. So I'll add a hint of colour. Then going to darken the shadows around and I'm doing this quite quickly because this and with as little or as few layers and working as I can because the paper in this sketchbook isn't meant for wet media you can get away with a little bit of it but I really don't want to use too you know too much it destroys the paper and with this one I think there are things I want to do so there we've got that feeling there of dimension you can see that. With the ginkgo leaves again I'd start at the bottom and work it out. And perhaps keep the edge a little bit wobbly just like the leaf in that case. I know there's white gel pen here but I'm going to see what happens. I know white gel pens reactivate with or can reactivate with moisture but perhaps not too much if I don't overwork it but I also know that I can once this is dry I can always go back with some white gel paint 
gel paint, gel pen to add the colour in. Now with this one I'm going to add some shadow under here because that leaf overlaps that one and I can do the same here with this. So I can add quite a strong shadow where that stem is. And it will become part of the rest of the shadow but not so much there's that line there so that pushes that leaf backwards and allows the other one to come forward and i'm just going to add some just to this one i think this is the obvious way to add um color to ginkgo ginkgo i just think that um anything else would just be a little bit perhaps over the top perhaps Okay, I have my white gel pen. So some of these are going to be nice and dry. I'm just going to scribble this on the side, on the back of my hand. Skin works really well. And what I'm going to do here is where I've got the highlights, I'm just going to put some dots of white gel pen in on this one, hopefully. Yeah, that'll work. It's very subtle because the I think I should have got a thicker gel pen because this 05 is a very fine one. There's an 05 and 08 and there's a 1 or 1 1.0 or 10. So here I've got lots of little white dots in here. They add a nice texture. And just by letting them stray, instead of trying to put them in a dead straight line, it's kind of, I'm trying to stipple with them. And the other thing that's nice to do with these, let me get a thicker one. I picked the 08 out, oh, the 05 out, thinking, oh, that's that's okay, 05 is quite thick, it is for a fine liner for me. But for gel pens, you know, so what you also can do is use your finger just to spread that white out a little bit. Just smudge it out a little bit. And it creates a bit of a highlight. without that harshness of it feeling like it's been applied with a gel pen. And you can just layer it up if you wish. Very subtle, I'm not sure that the camera is really picking them up. Let me try zooming in um, that button. That'll work. Yeah, now you can see along here. And over here you won't see the difference easily. Let me just add some more gel pen. Problem is the paper's still wet there. Um, here, right, come on, you can work. This is the one where I've added dots where there's a highlight. I'll just add some larger dots on top of those smaller ones just to help them stand out. Yeah, this is useful when it comes to stippling because you increase that whiteness where you want it with the bigger dots. The other ones fade then into the background so you really do get a really good texture going. So it's that here. I'm going to put lines of white here um, where I'd want the highlight to be on these petals. And you can see what simple lines are like and then on this one while the gel pen's still wet I'm just going to smudge it a little bit with my finger. Don't worry it comes off when you wash or your finger anyway. So just smudge it that little bit so it whitens it which you didn't see but it whitens it without um, adding that feeling that you've just added a um, just a line. So I don't know if you can see the difference from this one to this one or to this one even, which is much smoother. A little bit of smudging there, but here it's really quite distinct lines. Again, it's personal preference. I like to smudge a little and I also know that once the ink's dried, I can always go back and do some more smudging. This one, I am going to go back over these lines that I drew with a smaller pen 
and just bring it out like that. And um, I'm going to draw white lines in over the ink tents I popped in here. And of course they will show up so much better with just even that hint of colour, even though this paper's off white. So I'm not sure how much you can see that, but to my eyes it's distinctly, the lines are there, very much so. Um, and here I'm going to add white lines from that outside edge and I'm just going to smudge them down. No messing around, just straight down. And I'm adding the ink where I know that I can smudge it with one stripe, swipe in the same direction. So some techniques for you as well. So let me just zoom out. And then I haven't filled my page, but then I tend, don't always do that. But two quite organic tangle patterns, and they are tangle patterns because they're made up of very simple strokes and you can build them up out of those strokes, those shapes. Um, one that has a kind of florally feel or a pile of, it's almost like looking at a pile of mushrooms from the bottom. Fungi or lichen, not lichen, well it could be lichen I suppose, something like that with some weird leaves, alien leaves growing. It's very organic and these really do remind me of ginkgo leaves. It's ginkgo is the pattern instead of ginkgo but ginkgo and these are things i love to use in um, um i haven't don't think i've used guinea i use something similar but it's not quite like that my variation i, I was going to finish but i'll do this very quickly is my variation let me get my thing is if this is something i'm starting to add a different pattern to I actually draw a ring in and then I put a crazy kind of shape in one piece and sometimes I'll order this so it looks a little bit round like the underneath of a mushroom cap or the bottom of fungus and then I will add the lines in just like I have with ginkgo or not ginkgo with both of them actually with Guinea and Gingo. You don't always break the lines, sometimes I leave them solid. Sometimes I'll leave a couple of gaps in the lines just to break them up and give some variation and that sense that there's some volume there. So that's my that's a variation I use quite often. And I'll stack them up and Sometimes I'll go I'm sure I'm not the only person who uses this kind of pattern. When you get inspiration from nature, it's going to be used by a lot of people. It is so lovely. And that's not to put you off using it. Please use it. But put things together in your own way. And that you only find your own way by working with things, trying things out, drawing. This actually, I would be so happy just to carry this on as a complete drawing. Um, it's already building up quite interestingly. Something else I would do with these. And if, you've, if you're familiar with me and my work, I often, my, not so much colouring book work, but certainly in my personal work, I end up with things that look an awful lot like eyes. I'll show you something I've been working on. But even that, it looks like there's a seed pod in the middle. And you can draw this, these spokes very straight, if you wish, rather than curving them because they too will give dimension. And if you choose to weight the ends on the outside, it will certainly help to give some feeling of dimension and curvature there. Same, we can 
create these as little round bonuses there. So it's entirely how you like to go. Let me show you what I mean about eyes. And then I will round this up because I need to get on with some stuff. So this is, I'll turn it round because this is the way I was drawing it. Hopefully it will fit on the screen. I bet you it won't. I'll put it on the side. Which way would be best? Yeah, um, this is the top of the image. But you get the idea. And there's just loads of eyes have crept into it. Why? I have no idea. Silly question. Why would I know? But um, I just do. And it just happens when I'm drawing quite abstractly. And there's, there's the threat of one to be made there, perhaps. And perhaps one down here. And so I might leave that, though, just to see. Yeah, we've forgotten about that one. Nope. Perhaps it's a white eye. No pupil. It's just it's an alien eye. So, yeah, so... I go back to this one, my Ganilli, and I'll just wrap this up by saying, have a go. When you look at something that's drawn like this, it looks ever so complicated because how on earth do you start that? How on earth do you do all of that? And the answer is, you start with one thing. And that one thing could be that upside down heart shape that you start adding lines to. Then you add another and another and gradually it grows. You can change the shapes by layers. You can choose when to stop the number of layers and start another. You know, it would be easy to grow another Ginnelly off here. So here's the start of another one. So it's tucked in behind this outside rim and then you just carry on as you would with your with this just tucking it in underneath everything else where it goes i'm doing this quite sketchily now it is a sketchbook varying the thickness of lines brings things to the forefront and sends them to the back so, and using weight, line weight, to denote where one layer ends and another one begins is a way of separating the layers out, especially if you think about which bits would be in shadow more. So these ones would be more in shadow, the ones at the top wouldn't be. And I'd put a nice thick shadow around there so that it feels like it's sat behind. So it is just building up one thing at a time and fill your piece of paper. The wonderful thing about Zentangle is that the tiles, the, the traditional tiles or the original tiles are three and a half inches by three and a half inches, which is about, let me have a look, three and a half. It's about, it's about eight and a half centimetres by eight and a half centimetres give or take a millimetre either way, um, it's close enough. So if you want to cut your own pieces, you've only got a small area to work in. And you can fill that quite easily, especially if you use a thicker pen. I, mean, I think it's O2s are the ones that, that are used for, you know, Zentangle. But do something bigger, you know. Um, I like a four inch by four inch tile. It's this size. It's only a little bit bigger, but I find it suits me more. And you can get away with um, thicker pens and make thicker lines, which is what I prefer. I like fine lines for texture like this, but for you know drawing distinct patterns, I like something that's a bit bolder. That's my personal style. So but sketchbooks are so valuable because it gives you an opportunity to try things and see what happens if. You know, I'm already thinking about artwork with this in. This is very abstract, but so is this. But it's got a botanical feel because it's not based in reality. So have a go, see what you come up with. If you share it on social media, please tag me. If you want me to see it, you can contact me via my web page or by leaving a comment and... Um, I don't know if you can private message on 
I don't think you can on YouTube, but certainly if you find me on Twitter or on Facebook, if you, if you belong to them or Instagram, you can always get in touch with me privately. If you don't want to show everybody, I'd love to see what you do. All right. And don't forget, I used to be a teacher, so I'm never going to tell you that is rubbish because nothing is because it's created by you with honesty. And our worst critics are ourselves. So don't be so hard on yourself. Have a go and practice, practice, practice. And that's something I'm off to do because I'm, I've got a meeting to go to this afternoon. Um, it's not business or anything. It's kind of pleasure. It's very strange. But um, I've started a domestic course yesterday, which is um, to do with lettering. And I've started a lettering sketchbook and I have filled a few pages with letters already, which is worrying. It's what I did in the middle of the night. And for me, it's it, the message always is practice, practice, practice over and over again. And I'm just lucky that I find this easy to do. Lettering, I'm very hard on myself and um, it's something I want to work at. So whatever else you do today, take care. Enjoy yourselves, look after yourselves and find time to be creative. And I will see you again sometime soon. Take care for now. Bye. Bye.